In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi as a web server. And to do this we're going to use a combination of Nginx and PHP. Uh, we're using Nginx um, as an alternative in place of Apache. And the reason behind that is that Apache uh, consumes far more resources um, than Nginx. And that really comes into play since we're installing this on the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we need to do um, is install Nginx and up to this point um, I've just got a fresh copy of Raspbian and I've only expanded the root file system and uh, overclocked to turbo mode so we're just gonna go ahead and install Nginx first and then uh, the second part will be uh, setting up PHP so we need to first update our software sources so we get the current uh, package for Nginx And now we'll actually go ahead and install the Nginx package. Okay, so now that Nginx is installed, um, for whatever reason, the service doesn't start automatically after you install it, so we do need to go ahead and start that manually. Um, but when you do reboot your Pi, the service will come up automatically on boot, so you don't need to worry about that. But I've started the Nginx service, so at this point we have Nginx installed and it should be serving static content. So if we go to our Raspberry Pi's IP, you should get the default Welcome to Nginx page. And by default, um, Nginx likes to serve its uh, base site, its default site, out of user share Nginx www. Um, that's kind of an unusual location uh, for Linux web servers. Most of the time, and this is more frequent in Apache setups, uh, they serve it out of var www. So we're going to go ahead and set that up right now. We're going to create the var www directory, and we will serve our content out of there instead. And we're going to give ownership to the www data user slash group. Okay, so quick explanation here. The way that Nginx sets up its sites is you can serve multiple sites, multiple site configurations under Nginx. So I could be hosting uh, example1.com and example2.com separately on the same copy of Nginx. And the way it does that is it keeps its configuration files in the sites available folder here. And so that's where it keeps the configurations. When it wants to enable a site and actually serve it, 
you just make a symlink in the sites enabled folder to point back to that configuration and then when nginx starts up it actually looks at the sites enabled folder to see what it needs to bring up so if we go into the sites enabled folder right now you'll see it just has the default configuration that comes with nginx uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove that and we're going to create our own so we're going to unlink default so there's nothing there and then we'll go into sites available and we're going to do sudo nano we're going to create a new config and we'll just call it my site and we'll create a server block here which defines uh, the site configuration we're going to give it a few basic things here we're going to say listen port 80 because that's the default web port we're going to say root var www that's the base folder where it's going to serve content out for so if I look for uh, index.html or something like that that's where it's going to look we're going to say index index.html and index.htm these are the index files that if you uh, go to the URL without specifying any file name it'll try and look for one of these files as the index and for static content that's pretty much all we need so we're gonna go back now we're gonna go into sites enabled we're actually going to enable the site that I just configured by creating a symlink to it and now if I do a sudo I gotta restart nginx to make the changes effective so it should only be serving my configuration now and if I go into our www and we'll just create a test.html we'll say this is on Raspberry Pi and so if I go back to my web browser and I try to go to test.html you can see it's successfully serving that content out of the var www directory now so we got that all set so at this point if you're starting straight up you know files in HTML you're pretty much done at this point um, but for the more advanced people we're gonna go ahead and set up PHP which is used um, probably is the most common server-side language on Linux platforms um, in a traditional setup with Apache, PHP execution is kind of integrated through a module with uh, the web server. With Nginx, uh, we have to use a special protocol basically to talk to PHP. Nginx doesn't handle the PHP content. What happens is a request comes in for test.php.com and within Nginx you have a, a directive defined that tells it the process, we actually have to have a process for PHP that Nginx hands the request off to to handle the rendering of that content and then it returns it back to Nginx and Nginx gives uh, the client the response back and the there's many protocols to do this um, the most basic one is called a common gateway interface but that's insanely uh, non-performant so the one we're going to use is called fast CGI and um, in order to do that we just have to install there's a package called php-fpm and basically this is a uh, fast CGI provider for PHP and then we're also going to install PHP APC and what APC is uh, in case you're unfamiliar with it is it's a cache accelerator for PHP PHP is an interpreted language which means every time you request a PHP page uh, it compiles it every time as opposed to something like Java or uh, C Sharp. Those are compiled once and then served out that same compiled version. Um, this is for performance reasons. Um, the cache accelerator basically caches uh, compiled bits of PHP so that you're not constantly doing that recompile every time you request a page and this greatly improves performance on a platform like the Raspberry Pi or any other platform in general I mean it it provides a world of a better performance 
So all we need to install is this PHP FPM for the fast CGI and then we're going to install APC. That's completely optional. You don't have to install that, but we're going to do it anyway. And that'll install all the dependencies for PHP. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, I spelled the package wrong. It's PHP 5-FPM. We'll say yes. Okay, so PHP uh, 5 FPM runs as a service, and uh, the way that works is, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you can create pools because it creates, uh, it spawns off worker processes so that if you had a uh, multi-processor or multi-core architecture, it could take advantage of that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and restart the PHP 5 FPM service just so that make that we make sure it loads the, the uh, APC extension. So now that's done. So in order to serve up um, PHP content through Nginx, we just have to make one change to our site configuration. So in Etsy Nginx sites available in my my site configuration, there's only one block we have to add. We're in, it's a location block that's going to tell it basically anything ending in PHP you need to pass to PHP FPM and so that's fast CGI pass it's a Unix socket just like that we'll say fast CGI index index.php we're also going to add that up here and what that does is it tells it that now uh, if you go to the URL without specifying a file name, also look to see if there's an index PHP. And we'll just say fa include fast CGI params. This is a configuration file that's included with um, Nginx, and you just want to include that in general. So we'll save that. We'll get out. And now we just got to restart Nginx to make those changes effective. And so now we're going to create a test PHP here. And I'm going to do probably the most basic PHP test you can do, which is to call the PHP info method. And so now if we go to the web browser, we do test.php. Ta-da! We get the PHP information page. And this will tell you what extensions are enabled so we can see APC is installed and enabled. And there you have it. You now have Nginx and PHP installed and on your Raspberry Pi.